San Francisco is one of my favorite cities from the 50 states of America. And it is also the cultural, commercial, and financial center of the northern state of California. Hi, I am Donna. Welcome to my blog. This is part of my series of San Francisco vlogs part of my trip back in January 2019. That was when our world was still free from coronavirus. Now, imagine standing over the hills of San Francisco approximately 160 years ago, when the Americans were doing everything in their best capacity to acquire this part of the land and sea from the Mexicans. I'll tell you what, you will barely see any people or a boat or a house from the distance because there were only less than a thousand native people living here, the Indians. But shortly after the Americans acquired this area, well, after winning the war from the Mexicans, that all changed almost in an instant. That's because of the discovery of gold. So in 1848, right after the American took over San Francisco from the Mexican, the news of the gold discoveries went down to every part and corner of America and even the world. Instantly, from approximately under a thousand population in 1848, it bubbles exponentially to approximately 30,000 people and this empty San Francisco harbor were flocked by boats in all forms and sizes. That is why the San Francisco harbor played a great part in the city's history. This is now one of the iconic sights to see when you are first time in San Francisco, you definitely got to see the harbor. So the harbor now is the site of San Francisco Maritime National Park, the famous Fisherman's Wharf we're here, where you will have endless options for seafoods. It's bustling with restaurants, you know, tourist area. And the expanse area of different piers, we're here. Pier 33 is notably the landing area or the landing station of ferries that goes to and from Alcatraz. Well, the plan was to visit the two of the world's icon, Jeremiah O'Brien and USS Pampanito. But you cannot miss this vintage museum of mechanics or Musée Mécanique. This is actually right in front of the Maritime Museum. You will definitely be transported in time the moment you enter Musée Mécanique. If you grow up with the 80s, 90s, or even maybe a bit older than that, you will see some of your favorite arcade games here. And this museum has the varieties of vintage arcades and even musical instrument collection. Definitely, if not all, most of it are working. Although I can't tell if I was feeling nostalgic or irritated with the cacophony of these vintage machines loudly played by. So it is really deafening. If you don't really like loud music or especially this kind of old sounds and they're playing all together, maybe you just skip this one and just proceed to the Maritime Museum. This is definitely a treat for my husband because he likes his video games and also looking at the old video games it interests him so it is interesting.
Jeremiah O'Brien is one of the three remaining Liberty ship or a cargo ship that was built in World War II. She is a rare survivor of the 6,939 ship who sails on the 6th of June 1944 and that is the D-Day or the Brits call it Operation Overlord. Well, that is a massive deployment of the Allied forces of the coast of Normandy, France to save the French or the rest of Europe from the hands of Nazi Germany. As we all know it, the rest is history. But I was just so amazed by the magnitude of the preparation. The Americans have built these ships from their 18 different shipyards between 1941 and 1945. And they have built a total of 2,710 of ships like this in a span of four years. That's an average of three ships in every two days. That was almost 80 years ago. I think that was an amazing industrial scale production with a very rudimentary shipbuilding technology. If I were to compare it to the industrial building in our modern days, it's like building Airbus 380, which is the largest passenger aircraft today, except that they can only build at least 16 of that aircraft unit in a year. Whilst Jeremiah O'Brien was a cargo ship who carried the military equipments needed to support the entire Allied power in Europe, USS Pompanito was a patrol submarine who protect the American territories in the Pacific, but also some part of other Asian countries like Thailand, Taiwan, and the Philippines from the Japanese. Both of these World War II iconic war vessels who did not only survive the catastrophic war, but both were painful and inspiring reminder of the era not so long ago. Painful because it shouldn't happen. I mean, it shouldn't happen again. And it cost millions of lives for a price of world democracy. And inspiring as well because Good prevails over the evils of the Nazis and the imperialist domination of Japan have declined. USS Pampanito is a United States Navy ship and completed six war patrols from 1944 to 1945 in the Pacific. After the shakedown off from Connecticut, Pampanito transited the Panama Canal to go to patrol in the Pacific. So Pampanito took off passing by Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea on the way to Panama Canal and all the way through his first area to patrol which is Saipan and Guam. And on his first assigned patrol he was hit so badly that he had to go back to Midway Island, which is a U.S. territory in the Pacific, to have a body, a full body repair. So after his body repair in Midway Island and Pearl Harbor, Pampanito took off to his second duty patrol on the island of Honshu, the Japanese imperial capital, and of course it was heavily guarded. Pampanito was almost hit by a Japanese submarine while on patrol in Honshu Island. Pampanito's third patrol was on the South China Sea, which is near the Gulf of Thailand. This was the worst encounter that Pampanito ever had. He sank a Japanese vessel, and knowingly it was carrying 1,350 prisoners of war from Singapore and the Japanese was taking them to Taiwan and Pampanito managed to rescue 73 prisoners of war out of the 1,350 on board. Then Pampanito sent all those survivors to Saipan and head on to Pearl Harbor to continue. Then afterwards, Pampanito was immediately deployed to go back to Taiwan and there he 
sunk another Japanese vessel and then he head on back into South China Sea into the Gulf of Thailand there where he sank another two Japanese vessels so then afterwards he needs to head on to Subic Bay in the Philippines to be refitted so far did you catch up on Pampanita's thousands of miles of patrolling now Pier 45 is permanent resident of Pampanito and he was turned into a memorial and a museum at the same time and also declared as the National Historic Landmark. In total, Pampanito sank six Japanese ships. A real Japanese assassin. Now, Pampanito has a museum. They do organize group of children and adults to sleep overnight in the submarine for the I think that's for me to try. Now, I forgot to talk about Jeremiah O'Brien's role in a movie. She reminded me that the actual engine used in the 1997 film Titanic was actually hers. In 1994, on the 50th anniversary of the D-Day, Jeremiah O'Brien sailed through the Golden Gate bound to France. But she stopped over first in London, England and birth beside HMS Belfast who is moored in River Thames. So the two of them is one of the iconic World War II war vessels that survive to this day. One is moored in River Thames and one is in Pier 45 in San Francisco. She is now completely restored to its original World War II configuration. As it was our first time in San Francisco, we do all pretty much what a normal tourist do. So after our overwhelming World War II history walks in Pierre 45, we head on to the world's renowned Crocodile Street, the Russian Hill. Russian Hill was always been a mystery to me. You know, I've seen it in movies and hundreds of videos and photos. I thought it was a fictional creation, but it was not. Russian Hill was one of the most expensive neighborhood in San Francisco. And in fact, the most expensive houses were here because of the unusual location. Driving around San Francisco can be extra tough on a manual transmission vehicle or a driving stick if you will because of the steep hills. This crooked street will be your worst nightmare. My favorite movie made in the streets of San Francisco was The Rock in 1996. The car chase between Sian Connery and Nicolas Cage was an epic showcase of the San Francisco's hilly streets. So yeah, because of its unusual crookedness, this becomes a tourist attraction. In only over a century, the face of this place has changed always drastically and dramatically. First, from less than a thousand of inhabitants to approximately 30,000 between 1848 to 1849. Secondly, from a known Indian or Native American land to a well-known gold paradise. After a century, this 
city became unprecedentedly wealthy. Then, catastrophe happened. In 1906, the city was ruined by one of the greatest earthquakes in the history of America. 114 years later, which is now, it turned out to be so beautiful city. This part of my San Francisco series of vlog was an informative journey as it was knowing the beginning of USS Pampanito, Jeremiah O'Brien, and San Francisco City herself. The common denominator of these three were their testament to life and death and the struggle to survive, particularly in a world at war. Them surviving it was the testament that we should learn from their history. So no San Francisco trip is complete without even trying their local food. So we have tried their, well, famous clam chowder and shrimp sandwich and it was good. So I hope you enjoyed my video and I hope you smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you on my next other San Francisco series of vlog. Bye!